Well, hello, good evening and welcome to our church gathering this evening. Uh, my name is Lauren. It's lovely to have you tuning in with us for Zoom Church tonight. Um, I wonder how the week has been for you. Um, I've certainly caught up with a few different people this week and there's been a bit of a, a familiar narrative across the board of just a bit of lockdown fatigue. Um, I think a lot of people are just really hitting the wall, uh, maybe feeling that that despair of, of isolation, of loneliness. I don't know, maybe for you this year, this whole year has just felt like one big mountain and it's hard to see how we're going to get through to the other side. Look, in, in times like this, I love to turn to the Psalms. Um, it's this it's really a beautiful prayer book and, and song book of scripture that just runs the whole gamut of the human experience and emotions from laments to praise. Um, so I want to start tonight by reading a psalm, the beautiful words of Psalm 121. And I just want to invite you to, to really be present now. I know it's a little bit harder over Zoom church, um, but I encourage you just to press in now, maybe Close your eyes and just really hear these words of scripture as we start the service together. This is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Let's pray. Oh, sovereign Lord, how, how beautiful and, and humbling it is to know that, that you, the, the all-powerful God, the, the maker of heaven and earth, that you are watching over each and every one of us, that you see us, you know us, you, you care for us, you love us. No matter what, what mountains we may be facing, Lord, we can be so assured of your presence with us, so assured of your goodness and your grace. Oh God, we look to you, our strength, our shield, our rock, our redeemer. Set our hearts afresh in your presence tonight as we gather here for worship. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together.
of all valleys from the gravest of all valleys come the pastures we call grave a mighty river flowing upwards from a deep but empty grave Lord thank you for time together this evening. Lord, we pray that as we reach out to you tonight to learn more about you and to connect with each other, Lord, that you lead us and you meet with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thanks, Luke and Ange, for leading us so beautifully. It seems like such a treat to have two people on for music tonight. So thank you for blessing us with that. Um, well, for those who, who may have joined a little late, uh, let me just extend another another welcome to Zoom Church tonight. A uh, special welcome if, if you are new or visiting. Uh, it's great to have you joining in with our fellowship tonight. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about Q Baptist, uh, if you're keen to get a bit more connected into the community or if you'd like to join a small group or anything like that, I encourage you to fill out our Connect form. Uh, you'll find the link uh, going up in the Zoom chat uh, we'd love to hear from you and help you get connected into the community here. So tonight we are concluding a sort of mini two-part series called Stories of Hope. And we'll be hearing from guest speaker Paul Manning, um, who is from Baptist World Aid. Uh, Paul's been in pastoral ministry for over 20 years, I think. Uh, now he's working with BWA, helping to support uh, Baptist churches in their partnership with the organisation. Uh, for those who may not know, Baptist World Aid is a Christian aid and development organisation uh, that responds to poverty and injustice throughout the world. Uh, so we're really looking forward to hearing what Paul has to share with us tonight. Uh, also coming up this week, we've got a very special Young Adults event on Wednesday night, which is the 2nd of September at 8pm on Zoom. We are incredibly fortunate to be hearing from Matt Jacoby, who is a wonderful pastor and teacher and he will be speaking on the topic of spiritual disciplines, uh, which is really tying into the, the faith reboot challenge uh, that the young adults have been doing over the past few weeks. So I really encourage all our young adults to get along to that this Wednesday night. And of course, any honorary young adults who would like to join, we are not enforcing any kind of age limit. You are all most welcome to tune in on Wednesday night if you would like. Uh, also this week, uh, as is every week, we have our morning prayer meetings on Zoom from 8 till 8.30 a.m. on Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays. So Wednesdays is all in, Thursdays is for the gals and Fridays is for the guys. Uh, it's a really encouraging way to start the day, so I encourage you to get onto that this week if you are able. Now just a heads up about next Sunday, uh, we will be sharing communion together. Uh, we're going to be sharing communion on the first Sunday of the month going forward. Um, so just a reminder to make sure you've got some bread and, and juice or wine handy so you can participate in that meal with us together next week. I'm just gonna take a moment to pray for our tithes and our offerings. Uh, if you would like to give, um, I think there should be a link up in the Zoom chat um, or there's details there on the screen about how online giving. Uh, but of course, no obligation to give. And certainly if you're new or visiting, uh, you're not expected to give. Uh, but let me pray for these gifts. Loving God, we thank you that you are our provider and sustainer, the, the giver of life, the, the giver of all things. Lord, we offer these gifts to you now, not, not because we have to, but simply because we want to. It is our offering freely given in love for you. Lord, we pray that you would bless these gifts and use them to, to bless others, to to further your mission and to grow your kingdom. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome back, everybody. If you've got your Bibles there, I'm going to be reading from the NIV tonight. And this is the parable of the Good Samaritan from Luke chapter 10, 
verses 25 to 37. So that's Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. I'd just like now to introduce uh, Paul Manning, who's going to bring a sermon based on that passage. Hey, folks. Uh, thanks, David, for that reading. And uh, just, just a quick, um, I'm sharing Paul's message here tonight that he's prepared for us. And uh, just to say that uh, as a Baptist church community, uh, we, we seek to support and uh, work with our agencies like Global Interaction, which is our kind of global mission agency. And we had Ryan and Susie Smith here last week. And uh, Baptist World Aid is, is uh, our aid, justice, kind of um, social advocacy arm in our Baptist uh, family of churches in Australia. So. Uh, it's good to be hearing from Paul Manning tonight, who's Church Relations um, Manager with Baptist World Aid. And uh, also, if you want to find out more about BWA, he, he provides some info, but I'm happy to talk to you as well. Uh, and uh, we can do that later on. But for now, let's um, listen to the message about the Good Samaritan. Uh, here we go. I'm from I started with Baptist World Aid in May. 2020 as the new uh, church relationship manager for Victoria and Tasmania. Previous to that, I was senior pastor at Sydney Baptist Church. I'm married to Liz and uh, we have four adult children as well as an increasing number of grandchildren. We've been in Melbourne for 12 years now. Uh, we migrated from New South Wales and yes, we're supporters of Sydney Swans. I'd like to thank Nick for the opportunity to join you today. I'm looking forward to the next time when we can actually meet in person, but for now it's online. And I'd like to share um, some stories to start with uh, that have been passed on from uh, Baptist World Aid Christian partners in the field. The first one is about Ruth. Uh, Ruth and her family live in Kenya where when they first heard of the, this disease, which was killing people around the world, as a mother, Ruth was particularly worried. She knew, given that their, their situation, that they were particularly vulnerable. Ruth says, I had no hope of living. I thought our life had come to an end. But then an organisation which had been very keen in helping Ruth and her family and their community achieve quality lives, 
came to them with words of hope. They taught them how to protect themselves uh, from the pandemic. They educated them on health matters by using uh, the public address system and through household visits when it was safe to do so. Also, Ruth and her family were given mouth masks and hand soap. They were taught how to wash their hands as well as how to wear the face masks uh, properly. Ruth says, with all the information and help we received from ADS Eastern, thanks to your support, I feel like things have normalised. We are keeping safe and everyone in my family washes his or her hands. I no longer feel that we are alone because there are people walking on this journey with me together. Then there's Kashila in Nepal. He's 37 years old and he lives uh, in a very remote area of Nepal with four family members. Uh, most people living in his community are poor and vulnerable to disasters. Before coronavirus, his family's primary income source was through daily labour work. But after the nationwide lockdown, the primary income source was cut off. They could not go out, which meant they could not go to work. Kasila's family had very little savings, but with what they had, they were able to manage to feed everyone for two weeks. Kasila says, Initially, I thought the lockdown would be short-lived, but as it continued on extending, it became more and more difficult to feed my family. Kasila and his family were not alone. There were about 300 families in the area who were struggling in the same situation. Fortunately, they received emergency food rations to help feed their families. It was 12 kilograms of rice and two kilograms of dal, one pack of salt and one litre of oil and hand soap to help them stay safe from coronavirus. Kasila says, I'm thankful for your support and Baptist World AIDS Christian partners for the timely supply of the food packages. You know, listening to Ruth and Kasila's story, it tells us that we're not alone in, in the experience of the pandemic. And yes, we learned that there are people worse off. But at the moment, life's really difficult. We've got enough to worry about, don't we? I don't know about you, but this second lockdown, it's tougher than the first. The novelty has definitely worn off. Just when we thought we were through it, we find out the worst was yet to come. Greater numbers of infections, greater numbers of deaths, greater restrictions. And just when we thought we were heading towards the finish line, we were nearly through the worst of it. There's a little hope. There comes the threat. These restrictions could continue for another 12 months. So much has changed and continues to change. There's very little certainty of for now as well as the future. Looking at it all, it does seem hopeless. And honestly, if we only look at the here and now, where we find ourselves, our current circumstances, then that sense of hopelessness, it's going to remain. If we're looking for hope, we're looking for a future, for certainty, then we need to be looking to Jesus. Jesus gives us certainty. We're told Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever in Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus gives us hope and a future through his death and resurrection. And through his life example, Jesus gives us a way to live no matter what circumstances we find ourselves in. Even during a pandemic, Jesus shows us that we are to live a life of love and hope. Now, Jesus didn't only model living a life of love and hope. He made it clear his followers were also to live such lives, to live a life of love and hope. 
in Matthew, Mark and Luke, Jesus identifies the greatest command as love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. We read that one in Luke 10, 27. Now, we heard from the reading today. This is the answer given by an expert in the law who was testing Jesus, annoyed when Jesus confirmed he'd answered the, the question correctly. The, the man continues baiting Jesus, asking him, and who is my neighbour? So Jesus tells the parable of the Good Samaritan. And it's through this parable or story that Jesus tells us how to live a life of love and hope. We're told a man was travelling on his own, minding his own business, when he's attacked, stripped naked and left to die. Clearly, this man was a victim of injustice in that his basic rights were violated via the unprovoked, violent attack by others. The attack was unfair and undeserved. Through no fault of his own, he was left beaten, naked, half dead. The man was disempowered. He was degraded, humiliated, pushed aside, left to die. And to add salt to the wound, two men, a priest and a Levite, two men who should have known better, who should have done better, walked past him. Their actions only reinforcing, almost validating the injustice already experienced by this man. No love was shown, no hope was given. Unable to help himself, the man became trapped within the circumstances into which he'd been pushed. The man needed someone else to see the injustice and its impact on him, to show him love and give him hope. Ruth and Kusila needed the same, didn't they? You know, unable to help themselves, their families, their communities. They needed others to see the injustice and its impact, to show them love and give them hope and praise God through Baptist World Aid and their partners. Others did. Jesus makes clear to live a life of love and hope. We need to not only see injustice, we actually need to do something about it. We need to act. We need to act. We need to be practical in our response. We need to, we need to respond to the immediate needs of those needing help, as well as provide support, which helps them move forward into the life Jesus planned, living life to the full. I mean, the beaten up man continued to experience injustice because two men, the priest and the Levite, both were top roles within the Jewish culture and society. They did nothing. They left the man lying there, watching the sandals of others walk by, unseen, until out of nowhere, someone stops. They see the injustice. They walk over into his life and literally saves it. He's shown love and he's given hope. A good Samaritan intervened. He did something. He acted. He gave the man a helping hand up and out of the unfair, undeserved circumstances. Putting it in today's language, he stops his car. He jumps out, runs over to the man and picks him up. He puts him in his car. He drives him to the nearest hospital. It's a private hospital, so he pays for his care. And then he comes back to check out to check out if he's okay, to pay the remaining amounts that are owed. The good Samaritan, the good the one who stopped, got his hands dirty. He literally got blood on his hands and dirt on his clothes. We need more people willing to get their hands dirty. That's an easy thing to say, isn't it? We can all easily agree as, we'll, as we just all keep walking. We'll listen to Ruth's story. We'll listen to Cecilia's story. We might even pause to do so. But as we listen, we're distracted by our own circumstances. We don't really see. And in the end, we keep walking 
we don't act. The more challenging thing to, is to actually do. That is, we need to be people willing to stop, willing to see. We need to be people willing to act, willing to get our hands dirty. We need to be people showing love and giving hope. We need to be people loving God and loving our neighbour as ourselves. Now, remember, Jesus told this story in answer to the Jewish lawyer's question, who is my neighbour? In the end, Jesus' answer is simple. Everyone. Everyone is your neighbour. There's no exceptions. With this answer, Jesus makes the point. Living a life of love and hope means that we need to treat all people equally. There's no exceptions. Jesus makes this clear as he makes the Samaritan the hero in the story. Something you may already know. There was a long-held animosity, almost hatred, between most Jews and most Samaritans. Both despised each other. By making the Samaritan the hero, Jesus makes the point where to treat all people equally. There's no exceptions on who we're to act justly towards, to show mercy to, to love, to give hope. Even our enemies are included in the all. There's no exceptions. All people are our neighbour and potentially need us to show them love and to give them hope. This means our neighbour is not only the people we like, our family, our church community. Our neighbour is not only the people living next door or up the street, the people uh, living in the same suburb or the city or the state or the country. Based on Jesus' definition of neighbour, it includes people we like or don't like, who like us or don't like us. It includes people who are local as well as people who are global. This means we do need to think beyond our borders. We do need to think global. We do need to show love and give hope to people whom we probably will never meet. And that's where Baptist World Aid comes in, with the vision to be love and end poverty, to give hope. We believe that poverty is caused by a breakdown of relationship at every level. Breakdown of relationship with God and with others and with ourselves. And this is why Baptist World Aid chooses to show love and give hope by fighting the injustice and poverty in many different ways. Whether it be in the emergency relief um, when disaster strikes or the creation of the ethical fashion guide or livelihood projects to help struggling families grow their income, sponsorship. Baptist World Aid is all about helping you show compassion, to be the love that will help end poverty in our broken world, to give those trapped in unjust circumstances freedom and hope. Let's now watch and listen to Boishiki, Massa and Molika as they talk about what sponsorship has meant for them, as well as what their experience has been like through the pandemic. My name is Boisha Khi. I'm a Boish Ponero Boshor. I'm a Bangladesh Bashkuri. My name is Masa. I am 10 years old. I live in Uganda. I'm a Boish Ponero Boshor. I'm a Boish Ponero Boshor. I'm a Boish Ponero Boshor. ปอดกําลังอังคารมันตอนโจลบ้างโทรศัพท์บ่อยญ่อมก็ประกอบมรดกบ้างกสิกรรมติดตุดให้ปุ๊ยญ่อดาลตุดบ้านพอลปีกา
কারণ তখন আমরা পুষ্টিকর খাবার পেতাম না বই কিনে দিতে পারত না নতুন কাপড় দিত ছিল না মামা নাকি গুরু সংক্রমণের কারণে আমাদের আমার দেশের সরকার স্কুল বন্ধ রাখা সামাজিক অনুষ্ঠান বন্ধ রাখা বাজার লকডাউন রাখা মিলছে ยาตุรีตะตะไดยาตุรีเลยตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะ
darkness in your eyes There's no question in your mind God Almighty God of striving in your grace God of mercy God almighty let there be light open the eyes of the blind purify our hearts in your fire
the light. Let the light that shines above become the light that shines in us. There's no darkness in your way, so have your way. Father, that is our prayer as we go out into this week, Lord, that you would have your way in us, Lord, that you would open our eyes to your heart, that you would show us how to love as you have loved us, Lord, and that you would shine through us, Lord. Father, thank you for the reminders that we've had tonight that Jesus gives us certainty, that Jesus gives us hope and a future. And Jesus has given us a way to live, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of what we're facing. Lord, you have shown us the way. So help us, Lord, to live lives of love and hope and to shine your love and your hope, Lord, to all people with no exceptions. Lord, Father, would you strengthen us? Would you encourage us? And would you bless us as we go out into this week with your people, as your lights, as your ambassadors. Lord, have your way in us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks again to to Luke and Ange, and thanks everyone for tuning in tonight. It's been a wonderful time together. Um, As always, we're going to have time now in the breakout rooms for a bit of supper chats and hangouts. So I encourage you to stick around for that great way to catch up with a few more people Um, so we'll go do that now and uh, hopefully we'll also see you next week bye everyone